And NDSU professor receives a prestigious award from her students. And NDSU announces their new university president. All this and more. Stay tuned. Tonight at 7 p.m., NDSU's Black Student Association is hosting Afrique, which is a celebration of black culture. Concordia's Black Student Association will also be helping run the events of the night. This will be the first time it has been put on in several years, so come to the Memorial Union Ballroom to show your support. NDSU outside linebacker Jasir Cox announced over Twitter yesterday morning that he would be entering the transfer portal, as his older brother Jabril did in 2020 when he transferred to LSU. Jasir had 58 tackles and three interceptions this past season. He finishes his NDSU career playing in 47 games with 124 tackles. He has full intentions of transferring to an FBS college. The Jekyll and Hyde musical will be put on this weekend by the NDSU Performing Arts. Winnie has more on this story. What do you want people to know about the show? Um, it's a great show. Uh, it's a collaboration between the music and theater departments uh, here at NDSU. Uh, a lot of people have put a lot of hard work into it. It's a beautiful story. It's a dark story. Um, I think a lot of people are going to enjoy it. Um, so I play Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, Jekyll is a scientist who is hell-bent on discovering the root of good and evil in every man. Um, and he's willing to go to any lengths for that, and he ends up doing an experiment on himself that takes him to a place he doesn't expect and turns him into Edward Hyde, who starts to cause some chaos in London, so then he has to figure out how to clear that up. If I had to tell someone about the show but not give too much away, it would be that, oh my gosh, it's just so fun. Um, and then the orchestrations and the music is so beautiful. And so it kind of gives you that classic feel, um, but we kind of have, I don't know, it's just, it's very funny in moments, it's very dark in moments, it's very exciting, and also there's like deep moments that will make you cry. So it's just, it has all the things that you would ever want in a show. Um, so please come out and check it out. Tickets are free for NDSU students, uh, so go ahead and register at ndsu.showwear.com, uh, I believe, yeah. Um, yeah, so get your free tickets, come see the show, uh, support your fellow NDSU students, uh, and it'll be a great time. Yesterday, the State Board of Higher Education selected Dr. David Cook as the 15th president of the North Dakota State University. The board interviewed three finalists at their meeting Wednesday, February 23rd on the NDSU campus, as well as virtually due to the winter weather travel restrictions. During his interview, Cook talked about his focus on community and the importance of students. He is quoted as saying, During my visit here, I was blown away by the deep pride the community and the state has for NDSU. There is a tremendous opportunity for partnerships and collaborations across the state. Being agile and flexible to student needs is very important and the enrollment issue demands more attention. An NDSU nursing professor has been voted to receive a prestigious teaching award by her students. I have more on that story right here. Sarah Berger, assistant professor of nursing practice at NDSU School of Nursing and Samford Health, has received the Mary J. Berg Award for Excellence in Teaching. She received the award at a ceremony held by the School of Nursing and NDSU College of Health Professions on April 15th. The award recognizes a faculty member who is an outstanding teacher, inspires and engages students in learning, demonstrates knowledge of pediological principles, and is creative and innovative in approaches to teaching. A recent nursing student said that Berger shares her knowledge and expands learning through her innovative lectures, clinical guidance, and her involvement in student organizations. After receiving the award, Berger said, in quote, My goal as a nurse educator is to assist nursing students in becoming not just competent, but also compassionate nurses. The reason why I teach is to help students become the nurse they want to be, the nurse they want to work with, and the nurse they want taking care of family members. Berger's innovative teaching methods include having students create educational websites on course topics, integrating art and literature projects to understand holistic care, in-depth conversations, case studies, a mystery diagnosis project, clinical observations of students to assess program outcomes, and more. Reporting for Bison Information Network, I'm Dashiell Menzel. These past few days, Fargo, along with many other counties in North Dakota, have been under a no-travel advisory. On Monday, February 21st, dangerous road conditions led to a pileup of 15 cars on Interstate 94 near Castleton. 
North Dakota Highway Patrol said that six individuals were taken to the hospital as a result. Only one of these six people sustained serious injuries, which were luckily non-life-threatening. Police in Moorhead are asking the public to help for in locating a missing woman. They say 23-year-old Hamdi Hassan was last seen by family members on Sunday. Police say the case is being investigated as a missing persons case at this time, since there are no signs of criminal activity. Hassan is 5'5", five five, average build with brown eyes and brown hair. It is unknown what she may be wearing. Anyone with information is asked to the Red River Regional Dispatch Center at 701-451-7660. On Sunday, February 20th, Fargo Fire Department responded to a call for an apartment complex at 1843 13th and a half Street South. The building was evacuated and the blaze was under control in about 10 minutes. 59-year-old Kay Holtman of Fargo was the only victim of the fire. Due to staffing issues, the Fargo Public Library is changing its hours starting March 1st. The adjusted hours will continue through the summer at all three library locations. The city says the change is needed to maintain minimum staffing at all three locations and to reduce unexpected closings. Both the downtown main library and the Dr. James Carlson library locations will be closed on Sundays through Labor Day. The Northport Library already was not open on Sundays. The 2022 Winter Olympics are over, and it's Norway who came out on top with 37 medals, 16 of them gold. Second place was the Russian Olympic Committee with 32 medals, Germany finished third with 27 medals, Canada took fourth with 26 medals, and the United States finished fifth with 25 medals, eight of which were gold. Coming up next, Malik has your sports update. Stay tuned. No kid deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. My name is Becky Parker, and I'm a news anchor at WDAY-TV. I graduated from NDSU in 2010 with a degree in journalism, broadcasting, and mass communication technologies, and then I had an emphasis on broadcasting. Sure. Principles of broadcast production and advanced broadcast production. Those were favorites because they were the most relevant for career experience. You're calling people for interviews. You're writing an article. It doesn't just feel like an assignment. It's like actually doing it. I was the news director for the first full semester of the Bison Information Network. The bin advisor here was very much invested in me to actually have a career in broadcasting. He helped me get my internship and my first job. The people in NDSU's Department of Communication are really interested and helpful in getting students the connections that they need in order to get a job beyond school. The NDSU Bookstore, where every true fan and alum goes to get their pride on. Gear up with a variety of high quality t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, and more. Made by top of the line brands like Under Armour, Nike, and CI Sport to help you show off your bison pride. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need in your two favorite colors, green and gold. After defeating number two ranked Oral Roberts last Thursday, there was a brawl that ended up with each team receiving suspensions and a $5,000 fine. The men's basketball team suffered a loss against Kansas City at home last Saturday. It was a close game from tip-off, but the Bison leaded by one point at half. It was the same story in the beginning of the second half, but then the Kangaroos started to pull away with four minutes left in the quarter. The Kangaroos shot 100% from the three and 60% from field goal in just the second half. The Bison were ultimately defeated 85-71. to The last game of the regular season is against the University of North Dakota this Saturday at 1 p.m. in Grand Forks. The women's basketball team had the same luck as the men's as they, as they suffered a loss against Kansas City last Saturday. They, de they were defeated 76-67. to Their next game is also against uh, University of North Dakota for Senior Day at 1 p.m. Moving on to baseball, after losing the first game of the four-game series against Abilene Christian, the Bison plowed through the Wildcats, racking up three wins, with one being a sweep. They are back at it tomorrow in St. George, Utah, facing Dixie State at 7.05 p.m. For softball, they competed at the Gata Challenge in Statesboro, Georgia, and swept the tournament. 
Tomorrow, they will be competing at the Lobo Classic in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Their first game is against Buffalo at 1.30 p.m. The men's and women's track and field team competed at the UND Tune-Up last Saturday. Tomorrow, both teams will be competing at the Summit League Indoor Championship. For the wrestling team, they traveled to Brookings, South Dakota to face South Dakota State University. They unfortunately lost 32-3 this weekend. They will be competing at the Big 12 Championship in Tulsa, Oklahoma. For the women's golf team, they traveled to La Quinta, California for the duel in the desert to face against Montana State. NDSU won five out of eight matches to secure the 7.5 to 1.5 win over Montana. The Bison will return to action at the Grand Canyon Invitational next Monday at the GCU Golf Course in Phoenix, Arizona. Well, that's all I have for sports this week. Next, Cole will take you guys to take a look at the seven-day forecast. Stay tuned. No kid deserves to go hungry, but try as they might, not every family can afford to put food on the table every day. That's why the Great Plains Food Bank and their partner agencies work every day to bring food to our hungry neighbors. Every dollar donated can provide four meals for those in need. Go to greatplainsfoodbank.org and donate today so no kid in North Dakota ever has to go hungry. My name is Becky Parker and I'm a news anchor at WDAY TV. I graduated from NDSU in 2010 with a degree in journalism, broadcasting and mass communication technologies. And then I had an emphasis on broadcasting. Sure. Principles of broadcast production and advanced broadcast production. Those were favorites because they were the most relevant for career experience. You're calling people for interviews, you're writing an article. It doesn't just feel like an assignment, it's like actually doing it. I was the news director for the first full semester of the Bison Information Network. The bin advisor here was very much invested in me to actually have a career in broadcasting. He helped me get my internship and my first job. The people in NDSU's Department of Communication are really interested and helpful in getting students the connections that they need in order to get a job beyond school. The NDSU Bookstore, where every true fan and alum goes to get their pride on. Gear up with a variety of high quality t-shirts, sweatshirts, hats, and more. Made by top of the line brands like Under Armour, Nike, and CI Sport to help you show off your Bison pride. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need in your two favorite colors, green and gold. Good evening everyone and welcome back. I'm Koi and I have a look at what we can expect over the next week. As we kick off the weekend tomorrow, temperatures will climb up just a bit from what we've been seeing the past couple of days. On Saturday, it should warm up a lot as we jump to a high of 30 degrees. On Sunday, we could see a little more cloud cover, but we'll still see a high in the 20s. We'll also keep some of those clouds moving into Monday where the high will get to nearly 30 degrees. For the last part of the seven day outlook, we'll see a few very similar days in a row with highs in the low 20s and lows hanging right around that 20 degree mark. Although today was very cold, we have lots to look forward to this next week as temps should stay well above zero degrees. Over the past week, we also got some neat weather submissions for some viewers. This first photo comes to us from Zachary Kent. As you can see, he got a great photo of the pink clouds that showed up over the new Sugihara Hall right here on campus. We also got another photo that was sent in by Julie Pate. This photo comes to us from right near Carrington ND. That's a very cool picture and thank you both so much for sharing it with us. If anyone else at home has any of your own photos that you would like to share with us, then send them in online at www.ndsubin.com news. Well, that's all for our show today. Thank you all for watching and have a great night.